Welcome to the Never Dull Moment. I'm Greg Blythe, and today we're going to just peek in on the beginning of my polishing education. Um, I've taken it upon myself to involuntarily volunteer a knife for this subject. Um, I am just getting in the practice of how to put the knife down the stone, the different types of stones, scratch marks, angles of scratches, and so on. We do have a brief introduction of natural stones during this video. Um, the journey has just begun. Lots of mistakes were, were made. The outcome was better than I hoped, but definitely nowhere near what it needed to be. Uh, lots of people chimed in. We had a lot of fun. We are going to have a lot of videos on polishing. We're going to master this and you're going to be along for the ride. Um, and we're going to keep telling you what we've learned. So keep checking back. I know you're going to fast forward a lot through this video. There's lots of little points that just come up. It's amazing what we figured out by the end. And actually today when I'm done putting this video up, I will do day two and we will keep getting better. Okay. So thanks for checking us out again. Hopefully it's not a dull moment. Um, we're going to keep getting better and we're all in this journey together. So thank you for your support. God bless. So I am uh, gonna try to polish a knife for the very first time. Um, I have spent a lot of time watching videos. I literally have not done this. So I've been on the phone with Milan. Um, Milan has been texting me. I've been watching some videos about polishing. So here I am for the very first time being vulnerable. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to mess up in front of you. It's okay to mess up. I'm, I, I'm good with it. So we're going to try to polish a knife. This is a Yamashine white number one um, sand my knife. The goal one day is to do something like this. This Damascus Yanagiba 270 millimeter. I wanted to do the Funuyuki. Everyone said it was too thin. It doesn't have enough metal for me to learn. You can see it's got high and low spots. So listen, let me be the guinea pig. Let me mess up for you. Let me learn for you. And um, so I do have a knife I aspire to do one day. It's a more than a thousand dollar knife. It's a 300 millimeter Kurosaki super high mirror polish. So we've got to take baby steps. So today we are starting off with a newly flattened 200, uh, 200 grit nano home. And uh, so uh, hopefully all those videos I watched this morning will make sense. My goal is to stay flat on the soft <laughs> Hey buddy, thanks for showing up, man. You're going to watch me make a fool of myself, Julian. <laughs> so I'm going to try polishing this for the very first time, Julian. I know you just got your like, um, so this is a white number one Yamashine. Uh, Milan in France told me this is a good place to start. So we have a Nano Home 200. I am going to stay on the hard metal and the soft metal on flat on the Shinogi. Uh, hey, buddy. Um, we are going to use the whole stone. We are going to change direction somewhat. So some are going to be long. I'm going to start off more, more perpendicular to the stone. I'm really trying to make my scratches on the soft metal to hard metal. And we're going to be uh, going back and forth on each side. And we're gonna progress. Today is learning day for me. Today is the day if I mess up, I mess up, I start over. I've had everyone in the uh, Japanese natural stone forums cheer me on. It was nice to see. Um, definitely some people in, in the chat right now are here who are very kind to me. Um, so the stone has been flattened. Um, I can't always look up and see what you guys are typing. I will look up occasionally. 
I, ha I learned from Milan today something that I never thought about, which was that a lot of the knives with the thicker spine that the Shinogi line, um, thanks, he says it, Dre said, I, I, have to, I have to mess up to learn, and I agree. I, I've always learned more from making mistakes. So, <clears throat> but what I learned was the Shinogi line, I never really thought about it. The Shinogi line is deeper. It's a bigger angle when you have a thicker spine. And so when I'm at the back, the angle there is going to be steeper than down here. And so keeping my fingers where they need to be is very important as I progress up the knife because the knife is actually kind of slightly changing its angle. So it was very interesting to see that. And also, um, I heard to make my scratches in the softer steel first um, to focus up on the high part. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna sacrifice this knife. I don't know how often I should look. Right now I'm just kind of walking up the stone. I'm trying not to get up on the hero, obviously. But I'm trying to stay right in here. Oh Lord, I got pressure because Sheffield Knife Sharpening just got on here and he actually knows what he's doing. So I am trying polishing for the first time. If you've just joined me, I don't know how to do this. I've <laughs> just watched a lot of videos. So, so we're on the 200 nano home, trying to put our first scratch marks in. Horizontal, trying to put the scratch marks in the soft core steel right at the Shinogi, down to the harder steel. It's also very strange for me to not angle uh, the blade. So you can definitely, I don't know if you guys can see it, I can definitely see the scratches that are in there. It's interesting that I did that on purpose. So, it's actually pretty cool to, to see them. It's my first time really noticing they're even, but they could be more of them. Um, there's a little bit too much spacing between some of them. I feel like that makes sense now. So if any of you pros are chiming in, I'm sorry I haven't seen them, but I'm looking for your advice all the time. Okay, wow. Definitely interesting. That is the Funoyuki. It is the um, Chef Knives to Go Yamashine White Number One Funoyuki, about 135 millimeter. Trying to see if you got, let me get it drier. Can't quite show you the scratch marks. I suddenly feel better. Like that made me feel really good to see those uh, marks. Okay, so anybody want to tell me, like, while I'm on this side, do I go from horizontal to the vertical in here? You're in, you're there. Low spots, you're looking for low spots. So I would say that I'm pretty even until I get, actually, been kind of nice. This is, a, this is a hardly used knife. So, so Jaren, you're saying you want me to switch to this angle now? Follow the con the curvature. Okay. Wow, you can really see the 
the load up. Use the whole stone. It's, it's interesting to um, hear the different sounds. So there's a big slurry for polishing. I keep that. Is that, do I confuse the, the it, it's load up with slurry? That looks like a slurry. Most on the corners. So I'm gonna keep the slurry. Yeah, I can definitely see a difference in the color right in the middle. Do I want the color to get lighter? Do I want it, like, is the dark the right thing or the light the right thing? I know I want the scratch marks even. So the dark is the low spot. For those of you watching, Jurian like literally lives in his kitchen doing this a day and night. His wife feeds him food over the shoulder while he's polishing. And occasionally, I think he goes to the restroom. I think he's just on IV for food. I don't know that he ever actually leaves his knives at any moment in time. Okay, so I feel like the color is way more even. Like the color from here to there is way more even than it was a second ago. All right, hero, I see you. I think the hardest thing for me to decide right now is like, when is this side done? Like it's just done when it looks even in color and the scratch marks are even. I can definitely hear a difference in the way it slides on the stone. Hey, you rough. So I took the day off work. I normally work today. Um, I took the day off work for a sick and tired day. I needed a mental break and I wanted to learn how to do this with my time. So I'm normally at work today. Uh, yeah, the scratch marks are cool. Okay, so the scratch marks are actually kind of going like, high, like a high. I don't even know if you can see that. Do I need to change directions? Do I need more directions on this stone? So those of you who just got here, I am learning how to polish a knife for the very first time. 
I'm on a Nanohome 200 that I have flattened. I am using, I am using a Yamashine 135 millimeter Funayuki white number one from Chef Knives to go. So my goal is to polish this knife today and we'll see what happens. I will have gained experience. I will have embarrassed myself a little bit, which is always fun. But I will, I will be a better person. And I don't mind embarrassing myself to be a better person. The mud is nice. That's awesome. Okay, step one takes a lot of time. I had heard that. I had actually heard that this, this moment is the most important moment and it, it takes the most time. So definitely I won't rush it. Should I go to the other side? Should I? This is the other side. The other side has like some stain some unevenness. You know, I'm gonna stay over here. I'm having fun actually. I'm having fun with the sound changing on the stone. Uh, Milan would say something about it skiing, like just sliding. And I do feel like it's starting to just work one side. So I do feel like it's starting to slide a little bit more. I don't know if that's the mud. It's probably, if I'm guessing right, it means that the knife is getting more even and that's why it's sliding easier. The low and the high spots are going away. Okay. I'm getting real time directions. I don't know if Scott's still watching, but if you're in there, I know you know everything, man. Just jump in, in there. So I don't know if you can tell, um, it's really muddy, but it doesn't feel like load up. Um, it feels like it's definitely cutting. So I'm just leaving it. I don't know how to show you guys the scratch. You can see the angle of the scratch marks, I think. No, I'm trying guys, I can't. But they feel really uniform. But I'm not in a hurry. I do feel like I see a dark, there's like a light spot right there now. So maybe I, I did that by not doing an area even. So I'm gonna work on that. Joe Bones here. Hey, buddy. Excited about them handles. Excited about them handles. People haven't seen the knife yet that I got for the handle that you're making because it's been a secret. I'm going to show them soon. Hey, Joe, I just got another knife yesterday. Oh, did my wife just hear that? No handle, it's uh, Santoku 
Kobayashi, Damascus, R2, it's coming handleless from Tony at Tokushu. I figure I'll take a handle off of something else, but maybe I'll use that other handle you're making if it fits. So Joe, like if you just got here, I am um, learning to polish for the first time. I've never polished a knife. Uh, I feel better now. I feel like the it's more even. Uh, a minute ago, I had it way more uneven, but the scratch marks are nice. Okay, this is this is so different than what I thought it was going to be like. I don't know what I thought knife polishing was going to be like. I really thought I was going to mess up a knife really bad right off the bat and then be upset about it. But I told myself I was willing to sacrifice a knife for this adventure. Okay, so something I just noticed I think I'm doing wrong. Represent Hyde Master just joined. Listen, I'm not even advertising him for a second. I'm wearing this for my safety. He gave me this really thick, amazing leather apron. Yes, I'm plugging Hyde Master, but the truth is, I had a spinning sharpening machine here the other day, and you know, you're worried. I, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. This thing is, okay, I'm not supposed to do that on the internet, but I feel good. I feel good and safe. Okay, so something I noticed I did wrong, I changed my angle in the middle of this. I had done this, then I did this, and then I noticed that my hand started shifting and I think that's a bad thing. I think from what I understand that that's a bad thing. Um, I need to keep the angle consistent, so I need to. Using the whole stone, the, the knife feels glassier. As if, if it, if it truly is like more even. Okay, so I made my first mistake. Check what you do half the time. Okay, so I made my first mistake. I let my knife get a little flat. And you can see I removed some of the Kuriichi. And I'm good with that. It happens. I'm glad it happened on an inexpensive knife. But I did let it get a little too flat. I let it get a little too high. I let it rock up on the Hira. So a little bit more pressure on the bottom half. Okay, it is what it is. Okay, so if I don't have any low points, and I don't have any high points, and I feel like the scratch marks are good, and it feels like it's sliding really good, I feel like that must be the thing that to, to turn it over. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's the answer. Um... We got a knife roll coming from India from Hyde Master. We're super excited about that. We'll be doing our knife roll episode. Okay, so. Um, we're a much lighter in color back here. We're dark right here. So I'm going to work on that spot right there.
You can, you know, when you progress and see what happens, errors will get visible. Okay. Progress. Okay. Progress to the next stone. I get it now. Progress to the next stone when I, and just see what happens that what I, what I did wrong will show up and it'll teach me. That makes sense. So one of the things I'm trying to do before I leave this stone is I'm just trying to make sure that the, the color is even all the way down. It's very close. Next stone, yes. So I'm, I'm feeling better about what I'm doing. It really does have a, uh, Milan says it nice in his video, it's skiing. It sounds like it's skiing. Very good. Okay. So we're going to, hey, should, should I just do the next stone on this side and not even polish the other side, Jerry? Just polish one side today and just practice that? Everybody in the in, everybody in the chat, please let me know. Let me. So I'm just gonna go to the next stone on this side. Thank you, Duran. What's up, Frankie? Frankie's keeping it real. So Frankie, I'm learning how to polish a knife for the first time. I made a mistake already, and I got up on the Hira, and it's okay. This is the Yamashine White Number One uh, Funayuki 135 millimeter by Chef Knives to go. So we are been on the Nano Home number one. We are going to go to, can I just go to a 400 grit? Do I need to go to like a, um, do I need to go to like a 300 from a 200 or can I go to the 400? If Scott's here, let me know. Three, okay, so I gotta find my 300. I think I have a King 300. All right, so we're gonna get off this stone. Then we're going to a 300. Then I'm gonna make my house a mess today. All right, so we're only gonna be polishing one side today. That's what we're doing. So this has gotta get cleaned. I don't want to put stuff away dirty. We also need to make sure that we do not take particles um, onto the knife. So we're going to clean the knife to make sure that nothing in the 200 grit goes with us. We need to make sure the Atoma is clean. So there's no particles on the Atoma. Thumbs up if you agree. By the way, if C4 is out there, we love you. Thank you. It's, it's powering knife sharpeners around the world. Oh, man. Okay, what we got? Let me see if I can turn this. We got all those stones over there. I don't know if you can see there's like 100 stones <laughs> over there. All right, so let's find. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to the King 300. To say this is a soaking stone. I'm gonna put that in there for a minute. Where's Scott at? Scott, are you on here? Sheffield knife sharpening. That's a soaking stone, right? All right, so from the 300, I'm gonna go to a 400, and the 400 that I'll go to will be a Am I gonna do like a Shapton? 
400 or 91. <clears throat> Don't go too far. I'm not, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm not going to leave you hanging. We'll definitely go to, I haven't even used it yet. We'll go to the 90 watt professional 400. I mean, it's, it's fresh out the box, yo. All right, let's see what we got going on here. I definitely want to get a hold of one of the big old monster nano home flattening. Um, yeah, I think that'll be awesome. They're not cheap on my list. It always sucks to think I can't buy a knife because I got to buy something for sharpening, but that's the way the world works. Okay, that looks amazing. All right, let's get all the slurry out of there. Slurry gone. All right. So I'm gonna go vertical, like perpendicular. So those of you who just got here, what we were learning from Milan in France is that something I never thought about. The, the spine is thicker here, so the angle of the blade is steeper it's more shallow here so the blade angle actually kind of curves it was great to see that point in milan's video so i am perpendicular to the stone to nice buy that nakayama we'll be showing off some nakayama today So because the knife is steeper here, I'm getting it closer to the real angle by having it perpendicular to the stone. We're also pressing up in the soft core steel. Now Milan, it's something I've noticed I haven't really done, but Milan makes sure his fingers are actually off the blade. He actually had some um, wear and tear. Now listen, Milan's been doing this a long time. He knows how to do this. I don't represent him. If I mess up, this is no reflection of him. He was very nice to kind of give me some information. The people in the Japanese natural stone form were very nice as well. So we're getting some mud on the stone. I'm not removing it. I'm using the slurry. Okay, so we need to look at this occasionally. <clears throat> oh, good morning. Um, so I'm noticing some of the core steel getting lighter, so I guess I'm thinning the knife. I guess I'm thinning some of that out of there. I don't know if that's a good thing. One day I'll be a good night polisher. All things in time. We can't all be Damien. So I'm really trying to make sure that the knife stays at the same angle so the scratch marks are in the same direction. 
I do know that that is very important. I'm using the whole stone. We can see the high and low. Fuku is here, Brent. Have a good day. I'm taking him away from his family for a moment. He needs a break. So we're learning to polish for the first time. We did the 200 nano hone. Now we're on the 300 king. We're only polishing one side of this white number steel knife. So the dark would be my low. I've never done this before. I know I sound redundant. I'm just saying that for all those who just got here. So I have to occasionally look and look for the low spot and put my finger like on the backside to tell me where am I working. So I'm working right there. And it's funny because as it gets flatter, uh, how did Milan say it? it? It feels like it's skiing. It feels like it's like skating across the stone. I'm using the whole stone. Now, a lot of people polish with the um, handle off. I don't have glue chips everywhere to take the handles off and put them back on. So I decided I was going to do this one without removing the handle. I've got a low point back here. Um, you can see it's dark right there. You can see it's dark up here. So I'm trying to get those out. Lots of mud, I'm leaving it. Sorry, no microphone guys, I'm just messing around in my house today. I took the day off to learn how to do this, to be better than yesterday. I saw that Brent teased us on Fuku yesterday with this new knife. And it's not on his website for sale. It's expensive. It's beautiful. He's a teaser. If you haven't been to Fuku Knives page, go there and see the, uh, the unique shape Yuto that he has on there. It looks like maybe he's going to let me borrow it so I can do a a show on it. I'm excited about showing this new shape. If you guys don't know, Brent very early on was nice to us at our show sponsoring with some some knives and they're high quality at an affordable price. If you haven't gotten into carbon steel, it's a way of really getting in at a good price. Carbon steel at a good price. So I think it's funny because like, I guess I've been kind of thinning the knife. Okay, now Cook's Edge here too. I'm nervous. Cook's Edge got incredible knives. They got a lot of unicorns. I bought some stuff from there and I got a million um, browser pages open with knives marked to buy from Cook's Edge. They're good people. So in my knife polishing journey, apparently I've been thinning this knife accidentally and I'm removing some of the core steel, but I've got some low places I'm trying to uh, get to. So we're on the 300 King. We started on the 200 Nano Home. And and we're going to learn how to polish, man. Here's the goal, guys. One day, I'm going to do this Damascus Yanagiba 
And then when I'm really good, I'll do this very thin Bonayuki. You can see it's got some low and high spots on it. And then when I'm stupid, I'll get my 300 millimeter Kurosaki mirror finish blue number two worth more than a thousand something dollars. I must be drunk that day. I'm gonna tell you, I mean, it's not gonna be good. So I've really got a big low point on my heel. So I'm working right here right now. Definitely low. It's going to be a minute. Um, I, I would say right off the bat that patience is something you have to have because you know, I feel it right now where I really want this low spot gone. And, um, and I have to do the work. Okay, it's coming along. I don't know how many of you have spouses that'll let you mess up the house like this. There is a feeling that I'm learning right now, a feeling of um, like a little rock from the Shinogi line down to the edge. So, If any of you that are watching, there's only a couple of you, if you got anything to tell me or say or something you want me to do or just let me know. <clears throat> I got jogging pants on because I'm stupid. It is only 81 degrees outside. I tell you what, man, this really does take some patience. Sub dominate. Beachbacher, you live here, man. Where the hell are you at today? You're on the beach. It's 81 degrees right now. Beach Baker 9. 
But yeah, you got to be on the beach getting some sun today, buddy. So let me show you what we got. Let's do a comparison. So here's the side not polished. There's core material. Let me let me clean this for you here. So we got core material. We got an edge. I'm sorry, buddy, get better. Okay, not polished. This side, we got scratch marks. We got some low spots we're working on. So this side only has seat received 200 grit and 300 grit. We got a 400 90 watt pro coming. We're on the 200 nano home. We're on the 300 king right now. And then we're going to the uh, nano home. And we're going to the Naughty Wah Pro 400. Honestly, I'm feeling pretty damn good about this, I gotta tell you. Um, I do hate the fact that I accidentally got up on the Hira, took some of the Kurichi finish off. All right, Ross. I'm gonna start polishing one of Ross's knives just to piss him off. No, don't touch it. I should polish one of those Tanakas for Ross. I'm learning how to polish, guys. We don't want me polishing a knife that's really nice like that. I don't know if Ross will let me tell you guys, but um, Ross is going to be the proud owner of an original on Ryu. You heard it here first. I am. I have two, and he's getting one of them. He's going to let me shoot a video with it, but he will be an owner of one of the on Ryu's before on Ryu retired. A 210 millimeter Kuriichi Yuto. Well, Beach Baker, you're going to come to the house, man. You're going to come to the house. We're going to do this shit together. This is going really good, man. I've never done this shit before. And if you guys don't know, I've been doing this for a while today. Like, holy crap. They said it takes a while, but it really does take a while. So I'm just trying to polish out some lows. Before I go to the 400, I'm only polishing one side of the knife for practice. Okay, this is, this is, I mean, I'm, I'm understanding the sense of nuance that you have to have, the sense of feeling. Um, I can feel the blade moving a little bit on the Shinogi. I hear you, bro. 10 hours? Holy, I haven't even wanted to touch the Dinka. It's so thin, I just put it away. I'm I'm run I'm doing this as long as my phone has a charge. Is this what thinning a knife feels like? Yeah, I hear you, brother. I, I understand that. That's too nice a knife. Ross's goal is to own everything ever made by Tanaka. The problem is, as soon as he buys them from me, I go buy more of them. Because I already have two more. I got three more planned to buy.
<laughs> right? Is there any Dinka left? Holy shit. Pardon my French. I think maybe I've been pressing too hard. Like pressing instead of just letting it ride the stone. Or maybe that's another key thing is just like let it, you know, like let it rise the stone. Yeah. Wow. Ross, I talked to Evan, and he's holding that Damascus for me as soon as I get that money from you. Ross is buying everything I own. Okay, so it's just massively different to see like the ninth the side that was like okay let me wipe it off the side that was never pot that i haven't polished so yamashine uh chef knives to go white number one sand my like that's unpolished we're over here right now we've been on a 200 and a 300 we're trying to get even scratch marks yes i made my first mistake and i got on the hero a little bit up here I'm sacrificing this knife to the polishing gods to learn. So I, I really eased off my pressure now. I'm um, really letting the knife slide back and forth on the stone. I'm just trying to get uniform scratch marks. I don't know why I thought I was like sharpening the knife and just removing metal, which is stupid. I'm just getting scratch marks, you know? Uniform scratch marks, same direction. So I've got a couple of low spots that I'm working on. So knife polishing takes a while. I don't know what people charge for this. I mean, it's got to be a lot. You can probably do it faster once you know how to do it. But still, even if it's like an hour, like what do you charge, you know? I'm getting way better at this. I feel like really good. I'm excited. I'm like super excited, actually. Thanks, buddy. Like this knife should be sharp as hell when I'm done. I'm like, holy crap. I haven't even felt for a burr, you know what I mean? Like, it's there, but I mean, I haven't even felt for a burr. I can't wait till we get to like the Japanese natural stones. So I'll tell you where I'm at, guys. I have this spot, let me show you. It's annoying because you just have to stay with it, but it's right. I don't know if you can see it, it's right here. See, it's a little dark right there. That's what I'm trying, to, I'm chasing that. I'm trying to even that out.
I don't know that this will get completed today, meaning that I don't know how long this takes. So I don't actually know, you know, will this project be done today? I've learned a lot already, I can tell you that. I feel like the scratch marks are amazing. Everybody's left me. Only a couple of you are hanging out, I appreciate it. This is pretty boring to watch. Only one of you is left. Thank you. I am burning up in my own kitchen. It is so hot in here. I'm like, do I need to turn to AC? What do I need to do? Like, between the leather, the jogging pants, I might have to pause and change clothes or something. Holy crap. Hey buddy, I don't know who just joined, but I appreciate you coming. So we're polishing a knife, you're the only one here. We're polishing a knife for the first time ever. This is a white number one by Yamashine. It's 135 millimeter Funayuki. We've done the 200 millimeter Nano Hone and we are on the 300 King right now. We are finally getting that spot. So we had a low spot we were working on. Um, so, hey, listen, Scott, thanks for coming back, man. Like, just wow. I didn't know if the 300 was supposed to be pre-soaked, but uh, I soaked it for like five minutes. 300 King, by the way. Um, I finally eased up on the pressure and started letting the stone cut and put the scratch marks in. Uh, way better result, I feel like. The low marks are definitely almost gone. It's so funny, because, like, Chef Bill Sharpening, it's so late in the day, he's probably off work, and what does he do? He joins some other idiot, not calling him an idiot, calling me an idiot, uh, sharpening, polishing something. I'm just figuring it out, man. He's a professional. He does it for a living. I do it for your entertainment. Um, so, this was the unpolished side. This is the polished side. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Slowly. I, I think I ended up accidentally thinning the knife. Um, I think as I was kind of rubbing the soft steel to polish, hey buddy, um, I feel like as I was rubbing the soft steel, I, I rubbed it away. Hope everything's good in England. It's 80 degrees here. I haven't been to England in 20 years. Trying to get the scratch marks the same direction. I've had a low spot that's almost gone. Okay, so this is me learning. White number one, inexpensive knife. Yamashine 135 millimeter, chef knives to go, something easily replaced. 
the goal was to polish this, and like polish one side and uh, not polish the other. The goal is to go through all the progressions, all the way up to the Nakayama, like just do it to do it, practice scratch marks. One of the things I learned from Milan, and I know you know all about it, I didn't know, that. I just, I didn't never dawned on me. I didn't think about like where it's thick behind the spine, that the angle is steeper there than here. So it's been interesting to feel the knife on the stone. Um, so I've been getting used to that. I did, uh, I went this way at first for scratch marks to make sure I kept the angle. Then I've been doing like a 45 and trying to get them uniform and I'm really starting to get into it. We went from the 200 to 300. I have a Naniwa Professional 400 next. And then we're just going up. I mean, I'm just going to go the slowest possible progression through the end and see what happens and sacrifice this knife to learning. And then uh, I guess I'll end up doing the other side. One day I want to be able to do the Funayuki, which is so thin. Definitely afraid of the Shinogi line because I, as I was trying to practice, I think I could already tell I kind of moved the Shinogi line a little. There you go. So, um, so, I mean, like, you know, I got every stone, man. I mean, I really, I would watch you unveil a stone and go buy it. And literally to my right is, okay, my gimbal just failed. But literally to my right is like, uh, like what? A couple of hundred, like 50 stones, like a lot of stones. So, my gimbal just died. I got to find something to hold this thing up. So, here's what we got. We got stones forever. We got stones under here. And then we got natural stones in the closet. So, I mean, we're just going to take our time and go through everything hey buddy um i have to figure out how to prop this thing up now that the battery just died on this thing so we're gonna handle some business of that as well and sorry that i'm boring you guys there's my dog wondering what his dad's doing And so we're going to, we're going to be doing this all damn day, apparently. I took the day off, a whole day off of work to learn how to do this today. Because everyone, be, wants, everyone wants to be like Scott. Right? But not everybody can be like Scott. So I'm boring you guys who are watching because I'm trying to get my camera set back up properly. Let's see what I'm doing. <sighs> Equipment malfunction. Okay. Like we're gonna be up and running here. Hold on a second. There we go. We are back in action. Nice. Is that how we had it? Are we good? So I don't know if I lost you, Scott, but anyway, that's, that's the plan. We got a lot of the, it looks like a lot of the core, the softer steel is off. So we're just trying to get the, uh, I, I appreciate you checking in.
Okay. You're right though, towards the heel. Have more, okay. Yes, so I'm moving very slow. I'm just moving super slow. And, and I'm just gonna give it as much as I can today and take a mental break. But I appreciate you checking in. We're in it, man. We're, we're going to be a professional knife polisher one day. Who knows? I definitely will love doing a video on it for the channel. And I know you're a busy man. If you'll ever get a chance to let to agree to come on the show for an interview, it doesn't have to be a long interview, but you do knife sharpening by hand on stones for a living. It would be great. But my questions for you on the channel would be... Um, just your experiences, I, I, people like yourself, you you might say, um, oh, these stones are best for blue number two, or these stones are best for super blue, or I find I like softer stones for this. I have all those questions for you. So, you know, one day when you we can get that set up, I'd love to. I know you might not want to be on, you're on camera all the time, man. Anyway, enjoy your family, be safe over there. I try to watch you as much as I can. You're always on when I'm at work. And I'm a hairdresser by trade, so if I'm free, I watch you. I would love to hear you talk on some of your videos, like why you're choosing certain stones. And Light pressure, okay. Okay. Leaf string, yeah, and thin out, the, yep. Yes. I feel like the scratch marks are nice, but I feel like there's a dark spot, right? Like on the, like on part of it. So that's where I'm working right now. Scott, you'll probably wake up tomorrow and I'll still be right here. Okay, I think in a minute we're going to be going, going, going to another stone. Thanks, Brian. This is fun. I mean, it's taxing, but it's fun. So now I know some of the people had said, um, don't do not use the Funuyuki because it's so thin to learn polishing. And now I, I understand because of the amount of metal I've already removed in learning this one, that um, there wouldn't have been a lot of room to make mistakes on a more expensive knife. On a thinner knife like the Funuyuki. So uh, we're on a 300 King. We were on a 200 Nano Home. Um, we're getting our scratch marks uniform. And then we're gonna, we are not doing the other side of the knife today.
thanks for coming back. Um, we just switched stones while you were away. We are on a Naniwa 400 Professional. We're gonna make sure it's level. Build up a little bit of a slurry. So we're polishing a knife for the first time. We're using white shirigami number one. Um, it's 135 millimeter Funayuki. Any questions you want to ask, just ask. I don't know more than you on knife polishing. So I'm very, being very meticulous about the angle that I'm doing being consistent, meaning that once I get a certain angle, I'm not accidentally rotating. Hey, Angelina. So we're polishing a knife, guys. Um, super light pressure right now. Hey, Jess. Um, okay, so Jess has polished a lot, and he's been working on his damn Dinka since Dinka was invented 500 years ago. Um, it's the most worked on knife in history. So, we're, we've been polishing this white number one, uh, Sanmai Funayuki. We're not polishing one side, we're polishing the other. I guess I've accidentally thinned the knife because maybe I was pressing a little hard. I also even jumped up on the Hira and removed some of the Kuriichi, part of the learning process. And I don't mind being, making mistakes. So we are on a Naniwa Professional 400. We were on a Nano. Yes, sir, oh my, I'm telling you, right? So I was on, the, uh, I was on a Nano Home 200 and a King 300. Um, we're on the Naniwa Professional. So I am, I'm gonna um, make pat like scratch patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a scratch pattern perpendicular. The angle of the blade at the back where the spine is thicker, the angle here is steeper because of the thicker spine. The, the edge flattens out, it, it like curves out um, over time. So the, the tip is thin so it's flatter. So I am making sure the knife is held at the angle, small movements. I have never had a problem with a non stone of any kind. Um, I do believe in flaws, like you can just get a lemon, but I own like 20 of them. Honestly, it's hard to find somebody to beat them. They're, the way you're gonna beat them is in polishing or something like that, I don't think you're gonna. They're kind of the standards. I, I've been doing that Whetstone War series on purpose, but I will tell you, we have a Whetstone, a Whetstone War we get ready to release, and you should definitely check it out because Naniwa 1000, I forgot who they went up against, but it was an epic battle and a surprise ending. So my pressure is like nothing. I'm letting the stone cut the metal to create a scratch pattern. Um, we did a lot of work on the 200 to make it flat and even. I've had a Naniwa at least eight years. I have three of them that are still going from seven years ago. This one is brand new. And the one that I did on the battle the other day was brand new. Um, and let me just say, uh, it was a Naniwa, it was a Naniwa Superstone. It was, just, just so you know what it was. This is a Naniwa Professional. Definitely has a hardness to it. 
And this one was opened for this. I mean, it, this one has never been used until this moment. The price point is good. It lasts a long time. They give you a lot of stone. It doesn't wear away. It cuts really fast. Everyone is in competition with that. So, Okay, so something I'm confused about is before I got on this stone, the soft core to me looked like it had gone away. It looked like it was almost silver and polished. So I'm very shocked at how dark it got suddenly. I, I literally thought I had accidentally rubbed it away. Here's the backside that has not been polished. So you see the dark Kuriichi, you see the softer, and then you see the edge. Um, I can start to see that again over here. To me, a minute ago, that was gone. To me, it was shiny. So it's very interesting that um, it's bringing out that, that steel again. It's just, that's crazy to me. If you guys know anything, okay, if you guys know anything about uh, what just happened and you want to chime in, let me know. I mean, supposedly that 3000 is supposed to be like amazing. I only have one 3000 grit stone and that is the Mori Hay stone, but it's the old one they discontinued. It's not the fire series. Thanks for chiming in, everybody. So I'm just trying to get the scratch pattern even. I'm moving my uh, my fingers very little because the blade's angle is getting steeper where the spine is thicker in the back. So I'm trying to make sure that the edge of the knife stays down and I don't end up rocking on the Shinogi one. I mean, if you're thinning, then you need something a lot, um, a lot more coarse. You have a one and a five, you can jump from a one and a five. The three, the three just changes your scratch marks, it changes your polishing, your polish is a little better. Um, you can jump from the one to the five. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, most people don't have to polish above a three. Yeah, I mean, no, people don't generally go above the three unless they're just into a higher polish. We're going to be trying to do some testing to see did the knife get sharper at a higher finish. Two identical knives, one sharpened to a certain point, and then the next one just continues to be polished. And we'll see, like, does it perform better? We'll, we'll make a video out of that. Oh, you have a 140, a 220, a 500, a 1000. I mean, I think you're just bored and you want a three. You don't need the three. I would tell you, Bob Kramer would tell you, if you can fill in all the gaps, and fill in the gaps. So if you got a three, if you can get a three, get the three. But that looks like the last thing you're doing. I mean, yeah. There's a difference between going high to like, your board going high for polish and going high for performance. You know, but if you just need to sharpen your damn knife and get back to prep, then you just need a 3000 and be done. Right. So I'm starting to feel stone bite on my fingers. Like I've been, I literally have blood coming out from my fingers. Um, 
Yeah, my fingers are starting to rub the stone so much that they're blistering. That is interesting. Yes, perfect apex. There's a big argument that I don't like that's out there, and the argument is toothy edge over a refined edge. So, <clears throat> studies have shown that if you have a toothy edge, and, let's talk, and that's microscopic, that you're gonna like pierce the skin of the tomato, you're gonna cut fatty food. But teeth pick out, and knife grinders research shows that when the teeth fall out, it creates a pit in your edge. Okay, so, um, you can get like he's just saying on here. You can get a great cutting. I mean, I did a, I did a, I did a three hundred test or a two hundred test and cut paper towels. I mean, with good technique, you're able to sharpen the knife like incredible. The you're going to get stronger behind the edge, a longer lasting edge, if the clean apex at a higher polish. So it's a separate video I'll be doing just to show the things that you can cut into with a. A, a toothy edge versus a really smooth edge, but uh, the sharpness of the apex is that if you break a piece of glass and it and it shot, you, you're afraid to pick it up. But when you break the piece of glass, it's it could be 90 degrees, but you still don't want to pick it up because it's going to cut you because the grain structure of the glass is so fine it makes this perfect edge. But if it's broken at 90 degrees and it's a fat edge, it doesn't make for a good cutting instrument. I, pitting, I, what I mean by pitting is that a hole is when the tooth plucks out, there is a hole missing in your knife. So you have an apex and you have a tooth, random tooth, tooth plucks out, and then you have a divot in your knife, which in a weird way might create like another set of teeth, but when the tooth pops out, the hole is deep and thick. When you have a super fine apex with nothing on the edge, you have good edge retention. It slips through the knife. But, oh, yeah, make some carbonara. Mm. Um, so you're going to get a good knife feel. If you have something fatty and you have teeth, it's going to bite. If you have a tomato and has skin, it's going to bite. But as far as your edge lasting longer, it's going to last longer clean. And that, when I was saying the broken glass at 90 degrees, it's super sharp. It's clean and it will just cut you. But something thick like a piece of glass might not be good for cutting a steak. I mean, it's not good for like knife, but it's still sharp. So you can get sharp at all kinds of angles because the apex is clean and it's like perfect. And um, so look, there's a difference between knife feel, cutting feel, and sharpness. This knife polishing thing is interesting. So we're just trying to get even scratch marks. We're trying to make sure there's no low spots. We did the 200, the 300, now we're on the 400. And we occasionally need to look at it and see if we're even. Well, I mean, we're really close. There's like a low spot right here. I don't know if you guys saw a little while ago. Who doesn't like carbon? Oh, no, I love carbonara. What are you talking about, man? I've made carbonara like a billion times. I'll have to hit you with a pick. And I make like real carbonara, like when Charlie, you know what I mean? Like in America, it's very hard to get. So you might have to order from Amazon. And if not, then I'll use pancetta. But I mean, but we're gonna, we're gonna do the work. It's a simple dish. I've taught my children how to make pasta from scratch, make carbonara from scratch. If you're on a date, you don't have to pay for entertainment. 
and you make pasta, she's drinking wine, you make the food, it costs you absolutely nothing. She's impressed that the dinner, it's peasant. Who doesn't like egg and cheese pasta? I mean, come on, it's bacon, egg and cheese pasta? I mean, that's, yeah. Who doesn't like carbonara? I mean, if you're Jewish, you don't like carbonara, you can't have carbonara. Hey everybody, thanks for coming. So we're polishing a knife. We were on a 200, getting scratch marks, 300, getting scratch marks. Now we're on a 400. Um, we're using white num shiragami number one. Um, we're about to switch stones. Uh, this, this side is unpolished. This side is being polished. We're looking for some low spots before we move on to, what do we go to from 1,000, 2,000? I don't think I have a 1200. I think it's all be on a 2000 next. It is uh, a beautiful Saturday. I took off work to learn how to do this. I'm sacrificing this knife by Chef Knives to go. It's the Yamashine Funayuki White Number One, 135 millimeter iron clad. You want me to jump that high? You know, I mean, if I have a two and a three, and then the Moriyama, I mean, I have a, a I have a, um, a Ato. I have, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of naturals starting at like a 2,000, all the way up to a 12,000. Are you just thinking I'm just doing too much work? Like, I'm super happy with how this is turning out, man. I'm extremely happy. Red Alto JNS. Yeah, I can jump up to that. But I have, let me grab something. Got on the zoo. We can go to that next, or the uh, the auto. I know it's one of Damien's favorites. Then we got a Moriyama. Then after the Moriyama. We would go to the Ahira. No, I do not. The Shogudani. And then the Nakayama. So, I mean, we got like choices. buddy Mike just joined. What's up, Mike? So what's going on is we're polishing a knife. We've never done it before. And it's coming out amazing. The original side, polishing the edge. We're using stones like sandpaper. But it's hard to tell on there, but I'm telling you, I'm super excited. This knife's going to be wicked. I just sharpened all of Mike's knives at his house. He's got super sharp knives. 
I was practicing my uh, new disc machine, so I sharpened all his knives so I could practice. Mike is going to be leaving us and traveling the world and putting fiber optic under the ocean to, so we can all do this internet bullshit. Yeah, some of the stones are like very similar in scratch pattern. So we'll have fun with that. Mike is the reason we have the internet. Okay, so. So I'm saying this to, um, to Jurian who's out there. The Nakayama, man. I mean, I love, I love how hard that damn thing is. So, here's my concern. It's just right where the soft steel merges to the core. I feel like it's a, well, it looks pretty good right there on the video. Anyway, yeah, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we're going to clean this uh, synthetic uh, Naniwa Pro 400. It's out of here. And... You're wanting the red auto that Damien loves. Where is that? Is that this one? up the green brick of joy. Rub the low spot. There you go. We got bring green brick of joy. This thing's big. That's what she said. Okay, stop making fun of me now, Jerry. Who knows? It slides like glass. This? Is that what we're talking about? I don't... Is that what you're asking about? I don't know who made this. My wife ordered it. Sil silicone. I don't wear my real ring. If you're talking about this is the ring, I don't I don't wear my wedding band to the gym because I lift six days a week heavy and I don't want it cutting into the bar. My fingers are bleeding from being on the stone. Yeah, no, just, no, it doesn't. I got the watch for the. This thing's nice, though, man. It slides nice. It's a real glassy, kind of a muddy feeling.
So once again, what's interesting is that the, the, I think some of the softer steel is starting to come out again. Like it seems like it disappears and it gets dark again. So that's really interesting to me. But yes, Julian, I think I got like high on the Hira like a couple of times. I mean, that's what learning is, you know. You would think with me being a hairdresser and my hands in water all the time that I wouldn't have had this issue, but I think it was the, my finger rubbed the stones so much that the stone was like sandpaper, you know? Scratch patterns, it's all about the scratch pattern. I'm gonna make sure this thing is flat. I didn't make sure it was flat and I have a, a weird feeling that maybe it may or may not be, I don't know, but I'm just going to do this a minute. I feel better. I'm down to only one of you. I don't know who's left, but I appreciate you being here. So, it's a very just long and monotonous process. Who's here? Jorian, are you still here? Sunday Gourmet. Okay, sounds good. I don't see any deep scratches. Feel stupid pointing a knife at my head. That looks pretty clean, actually, in the camera. What do you think, Jorian? But I don't see, you don't see any deep scratches. Thanks, brother. Yeah, I feel great. Do you think the Azu is going to be... <sighs> Azu is 2,000 to 4,000, so I'm going to do that one next.
Okay. I think you can just get obsessed over this. Right? Just become stupid. This is why Jurian lives in his kitchen with his stones. It's all right, brother. This will be recorded. You can go back and watch it later. It's like, I don't even know what else to do. You can see that I got a little high right there. And it got a little. Thank you. I'm going to go to the uh, zoo next. So we're going to go to a natural stone. Um, this red Ayato is by Japanese Natural Stones. Thank you. Um, this is one of Damien's. He's from Croatia. He is a knife polisher bought for a living. This is one of his favorite stones. Um, he got, apparently goes through them like crazy. Um, so we're going, let me grab a natural stone. <clears throat> so this is an Azu natural stone. It's rated at like 2,000 to 4,000. Um, this was uh, picked up from Jonathan Gui. Uh, I will definitely go back in the comments when this is over and put links to him because we'll be doing natural stones from here on out. Okay, so uh, as a natural stone, it is not a soaking stone. Um, if any of you guys are going to comment, you're going to say that, hey, mine's not sealed. You're right. Should it be? Yes. Have I done it yet? No. I've been wanting to do it for a um, for a video for my YouTube channel. Hello, Dylan. Hello, is it a deal, Adele? Anyway, thanks for guys for coming. We are polishing a knife. That is what we have done. I don't know who's going to stay with us. This might be boring to you. So we have a knife. Yeah, machine. This is the factory side, untouched. This is where we are. We are polishing. It started off on a 200 grit, 400 grit, 200 to 300, 400, a 1,000. Now we're then we did a red Aoto, and now we're going to a Japanese natural stone. For those of you, I'd love to hear. I'm.
Hey, buddy. You're a really good knife polisher. Thanks for checking in. We did the Nano Home 200 Nano, and then we did a King 300. Um, we did a Naniwa Professional 400. We did. Yeah, what did we do after that? We did a thousand. Then we did the Ayato. Now we're on an Azu. And this is a white, I really could use your help. Thanks for being here. Oh, you're gone. Hey buddy, nice to see you. We're doing uh, knife polishing. I'm teaching myself and I just learned a pretty important lesson while you joined us. So we have a Yaw Machine White. Hey buddy, we have a uh, Yaw Machine White number one. This is the, uh, let me show you, this is the factory side, untouched. This is me over here. Um, so we did, we did a, a Nano Home 200, a King 300, a Naniwa Professional 400. I wasn't paying attention and I didn't go to a 1000. I jumped from the 400 to a Red Ayato and then an Azu, Natural Stones. Um, this, it looks good, but the scratch marks weren't... I feel like I missed the 1000. I honestly, I look at it and I think I could like not go backwards, but part of me feels like I'm going. So I just grabbed a brand new Naniwa Professional 1000. I'm going to go back and put the scratch marks on here for the 1000. Part of me thinks I don't have to. What do you think? I mean, part of me thinks I should just do it just for the learn. I'll wait for you to say something. Yes or no, maybe. You don't know. Give me a thumbs up. What do you think? Go back to 1,000. Okay. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back to the 1,000. And there you go. I feel like I didn't get the scratches out. I felt like I was bordered on and I don't mind doing the work. I took the day off of my job to do this, to learn how to do this. I'm definitely trying to keep my scratch patterns together. I made some mistakes today. Yeah. I made some, one of the mistakes I, I made today was I jumped up on the Hira and I removed a little color up here. And it's okay. I already feel like the thousands making such a difference right now. I think it was a good call. I 
mean, I felt like it almost went to a damn mirror just by going back like, down to a thousand because I was getting the scratches out. Hopefully you're having a good day, man. I've never done polishing before. So I decided I was going to sacrifice a knife for this today. Thanks, brother. Yeah, get some rest. Big difference. This was a big difference. Yeah, are we safe? Are we safe, Joes? My dog's attacking me. Okay, guys. Hey buddy, so you caught me staring. So I've been polishing this knife, uh, 200 grit, 400 grit, 200 grit, 300 grit, 400 grit. I accidentally jumped above the 1000. I went up to a red auto, Japanese natural stone, and then I jumped up to an Azu. And then I realized that there were scratch marks I didn't get out. So I'm big back down on a thousand, I'm on a thousand now. I'm feeling good about it, just looking for low spots. Um, this is my first time polishing and I feel I made a mistake. I got up on the Hira and removed some of the Kurichi. It's okay, I mean, you learn. This is the Yamashine. Uh, it is a 135 millimeter Funayuki white number one, Shiragami number one. And it is by Chef Knives to Go. So, 
but we are coming along. We are bleeding. Um, we have rubbed the stone so much that we are actually bleeding with our hands. So, you know, comes with the territory, right? But, you know, since you're the only one here, let me know if you've done any polishing. Yeah, no. This is the Naniwa Professional that I'm on. Something that's interesting is when you stare at it, um, there are spots that they stay wet longer, so they look dark and low, and then if you let them dry, you realize that you're better than you thought. So we're just removing scratch marks. Hello. I don't know who's joined again. So I'm about to jump off of this uh, 1000 Naniwa Professional. And I'm going to move over to the Red Ayato, which is a Japanese natural stone, synthetic natural stone, you might call it. Um, and it should be around a 2000 grit. I still see a couple scratch marks I need to get rid of. So I'm very conscious to try to keep my scratches in the same direction. It lets me know So I've got a low spot. So what's going on is it's drying right now. And so it looks low and high in places while it's drying. So I have to kind of wait for the the steel to almost warm up in temperature. And then I will be able to see if the scratch marks are gone. Okay. I feel like there's still a low spot. I hear you. So I think sandpaper is easier because if there's a low spot in the knife, we just, you know, contour with it. And so I definitely, when I've needed to polish you sandpaper for, and diamond lapping film, um, it just seems that, you know, it gets it done easier. So I'm just trying to teach myself the traditional, but yes, there's a lot of time and energy and patience and be careful with the paper. It doesn't cut through and cut you. Obviously, I've cut myself by just wearing out my um, my finger on the stone. My finger was dragging on the stone, and so the stone was actually abrasive to my finger, causing me to bleed.
I've had to be careful with how hard I push. So we're about to move on to another stone or higher grit sandpaper, you might say. So let's clean this one so we don't put it up bad. Okay, so we're going over here to this uh, natural stone. Well, it's, it is a knife by Japanese natural stones. It is a, yeah. So this would be around the 2,000 grit range. So I'm going from the 1,000 to the 2,000. I'm trying to remove the scratch marks left by the 1,000. just curious what Japanese knife you're doing it on what type of steel it is you're doing it on Cut my lip. Dang, what's up? Woo! <laughs> That's how you make a knife sharp right there, boy. Yeah, that was nice. This is nice. Wow. What's up? We're polishing a knife. Thanks for joining us. We've never done this before. I don't know if you'll be interested. <laughs> but um, we started with a high grit, like a low grit whetstone. 200 grit, 300 grit, 400 grit, 1000 grit. This is the equivalent of 2000 right now. Basically, we're taking this out of a knife, putting edges, like scratches in it. And then we keep getting finer, making the scratches finer. As the scratches get finer, it becomes more polished. So we're polishing one side of the knife to practice. Polishing one side of the knife. since you're still with me and not bored yet. So let me entertain you with um, what we have going on so far. So this is factory side. This is where we are. So we are polishing, trying to get our scratches even. Yeah, blue number two is amazing, and just that's great steel. 
And yeah, sink bridge is important. It gets you a little higher and um, your back doesn't hurt. We're still working. You can see down here, I think there's some kind of discoloration we're working on. Congratulations on the knife, by the way. Absolutely, absolutely. You got just message me through uh, Instagram. I'll definitely send you better pictures, uh, more close up of the one side versus the other. Enjoy your day off. Hopefully, it's nice where you live. So I'm just letting the temperature change on the steel, change the discoloration. See if I can move on to the next one. So, so since I've been doing this, should I try to add it all? I'm gonna try a crisscross pattern. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm playing with the pattern of the scratches right now. To see if it makes a difference. Typically doing a pattern crisscross is an advantage. The metal is uh, changing its temperature right now from the water. So I see scratches from here and I'm, um, I don't know if these are the scratches made by this stone or the scratches that are not being removed by this stone. Does that make sense? They do seem finer. So I'm going to, I'm gonna go to the next stone and see if that does something. Can always go backwards. slurry up here. So I'm really pressing very lightly. 
at the front end. I don't know if you're listening to me watching another show. I appreciate you being here. Nice. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. It's, 80, it's 81 degrees in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina today. So I know you're blistering hot. <clears throat> All right. So I switched up the pattern. I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Okay, so I'm gonna crisscross. Hello, DJ Steel. Shout out. We're polishing a knife. We're on a Japanese natural stone right now. We started uh, the knife white number one, shirigami number one. We started the knife on a 200, 300, 400, 1000 red Ayato, which is like a 2000. Now we're on, appreciate all of that, that's great. Um, now we're on the equivalent of something that's in a zoo, which is between two and 4,000. I will take a moment and show you the factory side. Yeah, well, I don't know how to do this, man, I'm learning. Maybe you know more than me. So let's clean it off, look at our scratch pattern and see what we got. So this was the original non-polished side. And this is what we've done so far. Let me get this. So we've got some scratches in there and we're trying to, well, that looks pretty nice on the edge right there. We're just trying to get our scratches even. I did get a little high on the Hira and remove some of the Karichi finish, part of the learning process. What's up buddy? No, you cannot have this knife. I know you want all my knives. I've got some other new knives you haven't seen. I've been waiting, I'm trying to space out all the love. So, hey, high point. Um, high point, I've got three knives you haven't seen. I've got, I've got one knife so damn beautiful that you haven't seen that I haven't seen it. Because the moment I opened the box and saw the purple wrapping paper wrapped so amazing, I closed the box. I still haven't seen the knife because I haven't wanted to open it till I open it for my YouTube channel. I got another knife that I haven't shown you because Joe Bone is making a handle for it, so I've been kind of waiting. So, um, so yeah, so that's the, hey, Chef Raggy. So that is the side that's unpolished. That's how it came. We are learning polishing today. This is where we're at on our side. Um, I have never polished a knife before ever, ever. I'm not kidding. So we did a 200 grit nano home. We did a 300 grit king, 400 90 watt professional stone. We did a 1000 90 watt and, but we didn't jump to the 1000. We made a mistake and we jumped up to a 2000 red Ioto na Japanese natural stone, synthetic stone. Then we went to the Azu. Uh, so that's like a 2,000 or 4,000. Well, I felt like the scratches didn't get out and then I suddenly realized I never did a 1,000. So I went back, I had to go back to the 1,000 to get the scratches out. Now we've gone through the Aalto again, which is a 2,000. 
Now we're on the Azu, which is like a 4,000. Um, my fingers are bleeding from uh, rubbing the knife on the stone and the stone cutting my hand. This is a Yamashine 135 millimeter Funayuki. It is a Shiragami one, which is supposed to be able to get the sharpest. Um, I got a little too high on the Hira and removed some Kurichi, so I've made mistakes. But uh, I'm learning and I'm excited about learning and being better. Rocky, it's warm weather, so it's time for you to come down to Myrtle Beach. I haven't played golf since March 1st of last year. I know, right? I haven't played golf, and so Rocky's got to come down, and we can cook in the kitchen, and I'll hit a couple golf balls with you, man. You're going to be better than me, but I don't know if my back can take it. Rocky lives like a couple hours away. Oh, I bought another knife yesterday. Holy crap, I didn't even tell you that. Yeah, so I'm excited. I hope my wife doesn't watch this show. Um, <laughs> it is a handleless red, excuse me, it is a handleless um, Kobayashi Damascus Santoku made of R2 steel. So I will have to put a handle on it. So right now we're trying to get the scratches out with this Japanese natural stone. Thanks for whoever's still here. Maybe it's Rocky's still here and Somebody else is still here. Rocky, I hope you're doing good in North Carolina, buddy, and I hope you're working hard and your wife is good and you're drinking all that good whiskey. I actually haven't had a whiskey in a while. It's not on my diet, trying to see the muscles are coming back. I haven't been drinking whiskey. So. Maybe I'll drink some whiskey today. What will I drink? Maybe some Balbini 14 year. Some Eagle Rare. I still have some. You still never sent it to me, bastard. Just taunting me with it. I really would like you to send it to me, actually. I'm getting low. So, and I actually like it a lot. Just give me your PayPal. I'm really liking the way this turned out. Um, this has been a frustrating day to learn how to do this. So where do we go from here? We're gonna to go to the Moriyama. So let's clean this natural stone so we don't put it up dirty. Okay, so we're going to get uh, the Moriyama. My natural stones from, come from Jonathan Gui. You can find him on Instagram. I'll put a link when this is over. got mud on my face. Let me get a clean towel 
It's in my clean towel over here. So if you're if you're used to using natural stones, say hey Corey, um, some some of them you need to build a slurry. This one is equivalent to around six thousand. Uh, slurry is coming up really nice on it. You might want to make sure it's even, level, no high spots. Or is it just you? Who's here? Shout out. I just see one person's here. Those of you, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, DJ Steel? Appreciate you being here. Are you an accomplished knife polisher yourself? Because you said this sounds like fun. Do you know how to do this? And are you a DJ? Or is that like your name? Like Doug Johnson? Exactly. I hear you. I mean, the material, the cloth material is easier to do. North Carolina, nice up the road. I'm in Myrtle Beach. You ever get down to Myrtle Beach? What part of North Carolina? I was born in Chapel Hill, never saw it. We, were, we moved three months after I was born. So I've, I've only been, my wife took me so I could see, you know, this school in the state. But I don't know a lot about the state that I'm from other than it's the birthplace of barbecue. Okay, absolutely. I was in Asheville uh, a year and something ago, rented a house, bed and breakfast. I mean, uh, Airbnb, sorry. And we went on the trails, hiking with the dogs. It was nice. I don't know that the city of Asheville was my thing. It was more like kind of nice um, outside the city. One of the things that's confusing to me a lot of times, hey, plus Corey, what's up, buddy? Um, is that when you're polishing a knife, the knife's temperature will change according to the water. You have to kind of like let some of the temperature dissipate to be able to see the scratch pattern. So here's the original side. Here is where I'm at. Um, you can probably see some scratches in there. I'm gonna get you a scratch pattern. But we're polishing, trying to get even. Man, I don't know what kind of, I'm just going through all the way up to a Nakayama and see what happens, you know? Uh, let's just go right to mirror on the edge. Yeah, let's do mirror. So I've got the I've got this Moriyama, then a Hira, then a Sho, 
Shobudani, um, then the Nakayama. So, I mean, I got, hell, I mean, I have diamond laughing film. I mean, I got everything. I'm just learning scratch patterns and I'm learning, for those of you who are here, um, I'm learning that the backside of the knife where the spine is, the angle of the knife is steeper here. So you have to constantly move your fingers just a little bit to make sure that the blade is constantly make it's touching. And so that was a new idea for me today. It wasn't something I was thinking much about. And uh, it's, turning out, it's turning out good actually. I did jump up on the Hira by accident. I want to say that I have seen them. I'm still learning that machine. Um, I've got a 6,000 uh, disc coming, 205 millimeter disc made specifically for that machine. So I'm interested in seeing that. I made that polishing wheel myself just to see if it would work. Uh, got Scott Gunn sending me a bunch of Gunny Juice products that we saw in the interview. So all that's gonna be coming. <clears throat> I'm gonna be buying a Tormic 1. I recently bought a Tormic 8 that's on the way. And I'm looking at a belt sander. Um, I mean, I, I can't pretend to like know all the shit about sharpening if I don't use everything and I'm going broke fast, but I'm trying to learn and be able to answer questions and, and share with you what I've learned. What I would want to know if, if you're Blades of Sun, if I'm doing scratches this way, 45 degrees, do I also need to like rotate the knife and get some scratches in another direction on the same stone? I want to say yes. This looks pretty good. I'm just going to move. I'm going to move on. So we're going from the Moriyama now to this is an Ohira. Anybody want to answer that question that I just asked? Do I need to alternate scratch patterns? So there's a rough spot right here on my stone. I got to knock that out. One direction without cross lines. Thank you. Thank you. You usually go in one direction. DJ, what are you saying yes to? Do you disagree or agree? I'm concerned that there's a, like a little spot right here. It, it's flat, but I'm just trying to keep my blade away from it. Right now, I'm just keeping the scratch patterns in the same direction. You do the opposite direction. And see, I, I definitely... I believe in that because I've done it with sandpaper to go the opposite direction. For me to do that, the knife would have to go like this and I'm not sure that I can get that pattern because I got a corner of the blade that's sticking off. So I'm not really sure how I would do that in that spot. Um, I can go straight up and down.
Sounds good. I appreciate that. I agree. Hopefully everybody's having a good day. Um, I normally work as a hairdresser and today is one of my normal days. I took the day off specifically so I could practice this. I mean, I literally took a day off work to have like a moment to myself and to practice this. So I'm, I'm not used to this Ohira and the scratch pattern. I don't know if it's undoing what I just did on the Moriyama. So we'll see if it's putting deeper scratches. Firefly, what's up? Where are you from? You can definitely feel the difference in the angle and the heel where the blade is steeper. You have to really kind of stay on top of making sure the knife is flat in that space. Hey, Johnny. Johnny, let me explain what I'm doing to you. So you're like, what the hell's Greg doing? So this knife came this way from the factory. It has a steel that is what's called carbon steel on the edge. It's very hard. It has softer iron on the outside. After a while using knives, they can get scratched. I have not, I've done a micro bevel, but I don't believe in them. So, so this knife is being polished by me on this side. I've never polished a knife before. So the goal is to make this a mirror. And to do that, you have to make scratches. So it's like sandpaper scratches are deep and they get finer and finer and finer. And then when you get so fine, light, the human eye can't see scratches and it becomes a mirror. Doing it on a stone is difficult, so it's like sandpaper that is hard. And synthetic stones have a fixed pattern. Natural stones come from the earth. So you have to search long and hard to find a natural stone that the pattern is even with no like big rock in it that gives you an odd scratch. So anyway, we're on some natural stones right now. So I've been trying to get this knife more polished and get scratches out of it and I've never done this before, so I've just subjected myself to being vulnerable today. I did an accident today and I accidentally removed some of the color right here, part of learning. And so uh, we're polishing this knife on this natural stone. We're gonna keep getting finer and then hopefully when we're done, we're gonna be super shiny mirror on this side. And I will post on Instagram a before and after. So I'm just sitting here applying water. I've got a stone. Think of the stone as hard sandpaper. I'm putting scratches in a particular pattern. And I'm wanting the scratches from this stone to remove the scratches from the last stone. Hopefully that made sense to someone. 
Hey, Paul. Ending on the um, Kitayama. No, ending on, ending on a Nakayama. I'm not going to be using the synthetic. I do have the Kitayama 8000, but I'm going to be ending on a Nakayama natural stone. What I'm also learning that I don't know is I'm learning the scratch patterns of my stones. Like I know what they're supposed to be, but natural stones are natural. They come with natural inclusions and scratch, you know, they, they're not all the same. It's not like a factory that just made the same thing. So, um, so that's what we're doing is we're kind of learning our stones too. Okay, so we're going to go from here. Part of me doesn't know if this was a better stone to go to from the Nakayama. I'm not really sure that that was a good choice. Um, the Nakayama might have been better. I, I, you know what? I want to go back to the Nakayama and check it out. I, I don't know if you guys will disagree with me or not. I want to see if the Nakayama is going to put more scratches in the stone to let me know that the Nakayama and the Ohira are in the right order. Okay, something I just learned. There's so much mud on this thing. Wow. I did not have a clue there was that much mud that came off all the stones. Did I lose everybody? So I'm getting ready to find out the scratches that are on the Moriyama. Are the scratches deeper than the Ohira? They technically should be. Part of me wants to say yes. That it looks like maybe That it's a little scratchier from the Moriyama. Okay. Okay. Does everyone else's wife let them make a mess like this, Johnny? Do you let your husband make a mess like this? Because I'm making a mess. I got slurring on my boxes. Yes, I am actually alternating that. I'm doing per, per, like perpendicular to the stone and then I'm going 45 and sometimes I'm going parallel. So yes, I believe in switching up the, the patterns. So yes, I appreciate you saying that. Um, we're gonna go back to the Ahira. I think the Ahira might've been a finer stone. It's a beast of a stone, I'll tell you that. Right? Right? We're making it, look at this. Blah. She's at work. Okay, so 
There are scratches that I cannot get to you. You can kind of see them in there. So we're going to try to get the scratches out now. I feel like this stone is gritty. Like, I just want it smooth. There, I mean, there, we're good. So no pressure, like literally letting, is how did Milan say it? It's the, the knife is skiing on the slurry. I don't know who's this thing. I know I'm not talking. I'm sorry I'm not entertaining you. I'm trying to get the scratches out. I feel like this knife is wicked sharp right now. Like, holy mackerel. I mean, it's been rubbed on in one direction for so damn long. Okay, um, this is when I wish I had somebody here. All right, buddy. So I'm gonna move up. I don't know if it's a good move or not. We're going Shobudani. This is the only one of the only. So the Ohira I got from Tony from uh, Tokushu Knife. This Shobudani I got from Burnell Cutlery. This thing is pretty smooth. I don't know who's still with me, but thanks for saying a minute till the end, I guess. I'm so, I'm near the end, but I don't know that I did a good job. That makes sense. Appreciating all the hearts. Who's there? Speak up. I don't I don't know who's. Hey buddy. What do you do, DJ? <clears throat> no.
Nice. I love that, man. I'd love to spend the day with you. I want to make porchetta out of a cow. I saw somebody do it once. I literally want to like de-rib the cow and then wrap it all up and then tie it up like porchetta and then rub it and then cook it and then eat it and it'd be awesome. I'd love to spend a day with you just doing the work, man. That would be awesome. Okay, so we still got scratches that we can see. So let's go in a different direction. Yeah, it's a good video. I think it's important to be able to do all that, man. It's such, such a good skill to have. Congratulations. All about it, man. Is it a private butcher shop or is it like for a big store? Do you tie off a porchetta for people? This has been an interesting day. It's for our own farm. It's called Hickory Nut Cat Farm. Nice, I'll look you up. I think, like, when I'm done, it'll be interesting to post pictures and talk to people. Um, I don't know if I have low spots. I, I think I wore away some of the core, you know. I only have two more stones. I mean, I have higher grit stones, I guess, but... And it's not that I couldn't do it with sandpaper. I'm not trying to do that, you know? I'm trying to do all of this with stones. This looks stupid. I'm trying to go in like an opposite direction. Does that make sense? The M Andrew Bishop, where the hell have you been? I tried to call you earlier today when I needed you. I got questions. I'll end up calling you afterwards, Andrew. I got questions, man. Oh, sorry. Andrew, do you want me doing crisscross patterns? Like I've been doing 45. I've done some like this, but should I even be like inverting?
Like if there's supposed to be a million directions on scratch patterns. I need to watch some of your videos. Now that I've done that, okay. Now that I've done this, I need to go back and watch videos again. I watched videos to get here, and now I need to watch videos now that I've done it. I'm up to, I'm I'm vertical right now. Is this okay? There's a spot in here that I've got above the core. You know? <sighs> I hear you. Yeah. So part of me, like, I have two Nakayamas after this. Because it's hammered. Okay, well, I, I started off, Andrew, before you. I started off with a 200 Nano Hone, a 300 King, 400 Naniwa Pro, 1000 Naniwa Pro. Red Ayato from GNS. <clears throat> okay. Um, then I went to an Azu. That's two to four thousand. Then I went to the Moriyama, around six thousand. Then I went to the Ohira, around eight thousand. Shobidani is around eight thousand, eight to, you know. And then I'm gonna go to the Nakayama next. Um, That's all I can do is just try to get the scratches up. I'll take pictures and post it on social media. Yeah, I mean, type, that's all I know. Hey, Filipino. Yeah, I know you're good at this. Nice to see you, and I appreciate you being here. I know you're good at this. Andrew's good at this. So, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to do tight to get the scratches out. I'm trying to minimize me. Trying to minimize the human factor. Okay, Jonathan. All right, Jonathan. I've been here for a while. I've been on your stones, your Moriyama, your Azu. So now I've got some real stone polishing people here. This is the Yamashine. White number one, Shiragami number one, 135 millimeter Funayuki. This is the side I did not do. Okay, that's how it came. <sighs> Using the 200 nano home for a long time. If you check this video, I was on it for a long time, sweating. 300 King, 400 Naniwa Pro. I forgot to go to the thousand and actually went up to the red Ayato, if I say that right, from Japanese natural stone. And then I went to the uh, zoo. I realized the scratches weren't coming out and then I realized I didn't do the 1000. So I went back down to the 1000 Naniwa Pro. Then I went back to the red Ayato. Then I went to the Azu. Uh, then I went to the Moriyama, which I love. And I like the mud on that. Then I went to the Ahira. Now I'm on this Shobudani. And here, I'll show you where we are. So, let me try to find some. So we got Shine on the edge. We still have scratches. So... 
So we got lows and highs and we're working on it. I think it looks better like with my eye than it does in the phone. Like I can see the scratches, but I did mess up and accidentally touched the Hira to the stone and move and got it lost them some Kurichi. So I'm just working on that right now. And I'm completely prepared to go all the way back down to some stone and flatten it more. I mean, I'm prepared. I took the entire day off of work to do this, you know, so whatever it takes. The question that I'm doing now is I guess I'm just trying to switch to scratch patterns. I got scratch patterns at 45 degree. I'm trying to put scratch patterns in at different angles so that, so they crisscross. Does that make sense? Anybody want to chime in in the, in the comments and say something? Or I know Jonathan, you and I can chat later. Jonathan's barely awake. He has a newborn baby and he's got to take a nap here and there. And he's not even supposed to be awake. I mean, holy crap. It's three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning where he is. Come on, Sylvan. I know you're the big knife sharpener. Are you the knife polisher? And I'm trying to use light pressure. I mean, I don't know how much pressure you're supposed to do. I'm trying to be light on the pressure and let the knife slide. That's the way Milan says it in his video. He lets it, he lets it ski on the slurry. We've been doing this for a long time. A long, long, long time. And I'm, I was prepared for that. I'm good. Very light pressure. Thank you for that. I mean, I feel like better already. I, I can tell you what I've learned so much today from just trying this. I mean, so much. It's crazy. I mean, I'm literally just like lightly doing this. Feel good. Let slurry work, build more slurry you can. Okay, thank you for that. I really do feel better about those two passes right there that were super light. 